So the next thing I want to cover is gearing and go a little more in depth into gearing. So one thing that really bugged me early on, especially with Twitch chat, of uh, people just randomly coming in and being like, oh yeah, you're wasting your time doing that. You shouldn't be doing this. You you don't need to be doing that. That's a waste. It's, it, it's basically what happens is veteran players tend to lose grasp of what it was like to start the game. They're used to having to work towards the best and they're not just used to being handed certain things in the beginning as well as you're they're not used to forgetting that you had to take baby steps you can't just go steal your best sets of gear put it on another set of units and go clear said content it doesn't work like that for a new player and that's what i want to kind of cover here is we're going to talk about sets we're going to talk about the progression of gear and how you should approach it a lot of my information and the where where i took the approach came from was from my diablo days um, when I played Diablo, it was about, uh, if I wasn't getting, if we weren't getting carried by somebody to get, um, you know, just during the normal random seasons, it's about working through the progression stages of gear. And even getting carried, you still have to do these steps. It's just, we are able to skip a few steps. And this point, basically what we're going to kind of equate this to is starting out, trying to get your early, you know, your early gear that gets you forward to where you're starting to farm on your own. You can start farming, getting more efficient to then working towards your set. Then you're working from your set to be able to now perfect it, get better stats, get your Paragon level up. You know, there was a lot to Diablo going into that. And that's also the same thing here. And it really irked me just with how Twitch chat handled it. It's like they lost touch. Uh, to me, it felt like they lost touch with what it was like to be in the beginning of the game. And we're talking the first 30 and 60 days of the game. That's really what we're focusing in on here. Sure, in 50 days, I was able to clear Wyvern 13 on auto once, which is still a pretty big milestone for me. Um, but we're going to talk more about the first 30 days of gearing. And at that, it comes down to just making progression. Taking a step forward may be the best thing, even though the, the set or the piece or the gear may not be the most optimal thing. And in that case, it's like taking this attack set on cigarettes. So, as you see, I have a few level 90 pieces. A lot of people wouldn't go have wouldn't have gone and farmed Gollum for this. Why did I do this? Because the pieces that were on the left weren't really that great. It just was really imbalanced in stats, and it just they weren't great pieces. As you can see here, I'm missing a 75 piece because it rolled so bad. I ended up using a 70 piece in its place, and I kept two of the original attack set pieces that actually rolled decent. They actually there's nothing wrong with it. So I was trying to make small baby steps with Sigrid, trying to perfect her and get her better. Because a part of my issue with clearing Wyvern 13 at the time was her damage. She just wasn't hitting as hard as I needed her to. As well as there was a couple other things, I was lacking in the debuff, debuff department as well as the speed. So I thought I was going to try to go in and tune her speed. I ended up getting losing speed but gaining more damage. Turns out I was able to get General Purgus, which allowed me to cut down my speed requirement and... Um, because of his passive giving you combat ready or combat boosts your unit every time he is attacked being that the wyvern unit once he has three debuffs or two debuffs he's going to always hit the tank so with sigrid it came more about just tuning a few pieces and that's what i want beginner players to remember it's okay to go farm if you have a random piece that say in the case of here i was just crafting to see if i could get something better for him uh, the ring was actually good. I, we just happened to have some stuff, and I was trying to see if I could get a certain set of stats for General Purgus, and I did, and it ended up being better. It's okay to go farm an HP piece, a attack piece, a random piece if it's a um, speed piece or a crit piece or whatever whatever it is. I, wanted, I can't stress that enough, that it's okay to do it. No matter what the meta slaves say, you can go fix to make your stuff work. And that's the big theme here is make it work with what you have in the beginning that doesn't mean just go up and level anything you still want to be smart about where you're going with it don't level up completely bad pieces just to gain one stat but if there's a bad stat or two on it it's okay it might be usable for somebody else so when we're talking stats what are good stats what are bad stats i can't really actually tell you directly what's a good stat and a bad stat because what a bad stat is for sigrid is not a bad stat for say uh angelic montmorency so here's a prime example uh a bad stat on um sigrid would be effect resistance which thankfully i don't think any one of my pieces here has 
effect resistance on it. I think it's only effectiveness and yes. So she doesn't have effect resistance on her piece. Why would that be bad for her? Because what am I trying to resist? She shouldn't be, she should not be attacked other than maybe one of those first three AOE mobs or one of those first mobs in the beginning of the Wyvern. But why is it so good for her? Because you want her to have the effective resist to resist getting pushed back by the Wyvern. So that makes that stat actually valuable to Mott Morancy. Now, keep in mind, when I'm talking Mott Morancy, this is the same Mott Morancy you see. This is just the specialty change one, which that's a whole other conversation, but this is just the specialty change version of Mott Morancy. It's the same unit, just gone through a process, which is very easy nowadays. So the effect resistance is much better on her than, say, Cigarette. Or in a case of um, trying to build an, a more attack stat on Cigarette, is more beneficial but if we go over to somebody say like um alencia it's actually better to build the hp stat because of the hp scaling her damage is based off of her hp not her attack stat so therefore her attack stat is kind of not really worth it kind of see what i'm saying so you can't just say go build this and equal win we don't have that here it's very subjective but what i am going to tell you is we're going to look at Cigarette, since this is going to be your starter unit. And we're going to kind of go over um, the basics of what are you looking for on her gear. And hopefully, most of you who are just starting, if you've got a new account, you should be getting a free attack set. And that free attack set will look just like this. It should be sitting here on Euphine. It'll look just like this. It's a free level 75 attack set, and the rolls, I believe, are static. So, meaning everybody's set should look like this. From my understanding, I think it always drops like this. So, the sword's got health, attack, speed, crit chance. Really good sword. It's got The helmet's got a, a health, attack, speed, crit chance. Good helmet. The chest has got health, speed, crit chance, crit damage. Really good. The necklace, may yours roll really well. Has health, attack, speed, crit chance. Um, the ring has health, speed, crit chance, crit damage, and the boot has health, speed, crit chance, crit damage. Now, out of this, you're really hoping for more crit damage because, honestly, your in-game goal is to take two pieces, preferably something left side might be easier for you to do, and replace with crit chance gear um, because these are actually really good accessories, so replacing the right side is really hard to do, especially getting crit damage with those rolls, as well as getting a ring with those rolls, and boots aren't really that hard to get, but they're a little bit harder to obtain because of the different variations, so getting attack stat boots is really, really good really early on. Now, something you may have to tweak, depending on your cigarette, you may have to change her boots, because something that I haven't really brought up, and I've touched on it, is I mentioned that my General Purgus, um, pushes cigarette forward that's why she's so slow in your case m some people may need to have their cigarette faster around the 180 speed range because at this point the wyvern might actually lap cigarette in her damage she is that slow so she may miss out on a cycle because the wyvern's just faster than her but by be her being around 180 she shouldn't really get lapped and would you wouldn't really notice it in that aspect um but the stats you're going to want to look for on Cigarette, especially rolling early on, you're going to hope that you get attack percent, crit chance, crit damage. That's really what you're really after here. Speed is always a bonus if it happens to hit it along the way. Um, in the helmet, you're looking for crit chance, crit damage, attack percent. Effectiveness, you will need some. You do want your Cigarette to have around 65% effectiveness so that she can land the bleeds and the uh, unhealable. Um debuff on the wyvern that's really important so around 50 to 60 percent it's okay to play the odds at that point um you should land most of your debuffs uh the chest plate cannot roll attack percent so you're going to want to look for speed health uh effectiveness uh crit chance crit damage if though if your ch chest plates have that that's okay for her um on your on your accessories you're going to be want to be looking for like a crit damage necklace because again you really want crit on her especially with the way she's designed that's how you want her built and then you're going to want crit chance attack percent some effectiveness speed is okay if you roll it health is okay but you don't really need the health stat because you don't need health if you're not if you kill it first so as long as she has some health and can kill it she should not be attacked again 
as long as the wyvern has two debuffs or more she is not going to get attacked the ring attack percent is definitely a must here uh and again you're gonna want uh crit chance and crit damage speed is great um and your health is great if it rolls there boots this will be the subjective one it either needs to be a speed imprint boot so it'd be around um i think it's like 45 speed or 40 speed on a 85 or on an 85 piece uh the attack boot will not come like that but it's something you could farm and then at that point if you do get the if you do get the speed imprint you will want attack percentage speed crit chance crit damage on it that's going to be what you're going to be looking for for cigarette if it's attack percent like this speed crit chance crit damage are what you're going to be after again mostly need this crit chance is always beneficial it's not bad to have it um as far as exclusive equipments, uh, I will bring up this really quickly, is you get this from Hall of Trials, um, which this may be a little difficult for some people to farm in the beginning. I have the Sever. It has saved me more times than I can count, having that extra 20% damage on her S1. The recommended and the best in slot is actually her, or is her skill 2 smash. And the reason being is that it allows you to get to 75% health and it'll, it'll activate her chain combo where she will S, well, she'll use her skill 2 into her skill 1 combo. This is a very, very deadly combo once it gets activated because it's really, really awesome that you can chain that much damage back to back together. But honestly, with the way my team's set up and with how much damage I do, I never go in with S2 being up because it's typically used on the prior... Uh, mob pack because she'll typically s3 and then s2 in that pack uh so i always go into the wyvern with an s1 and chip typically between my clarissa my um lulica and my cigarette i've probably already got it below the 50 percent marker by the time she gets that skill up so plan to aim for the better combo if you're gonna do it at least i'm telling you to do it right i'll eventually get it but I would rather get some other exclusive equipments before I dig into this. And I would rather just max roll it. I'd rather go craft it. Um, and then obviously for her, you want to slap on your Daydream Joker. As soon as you get one, work on max limit breaking it. But do not, at first, dupe. By dupe, I mean max limit break or start to limit break your Daydream Jokers. Lock your first two. Give it to your first two damage dealers. In the case of most people, it's going to be Alexa and Sigrid. You want to make sure they have a Daydream Joker, plus 15, and then you start working on limit breaking cigarettes to um, Alexis. If you happen to be lucky and starting with Clarissa, give it to Clarissa um, and let her be the one. Although it's better suited for Clarissa to be an extra debuffer, that's why I use Junkyard Dog, which is a um, came through the Guilty Gear collab. You are probably not going to start with this. This is going to be a year before you get to see this artifact again. But if you happen to have it on your account, this is what I run on my um, Clarissa. And I use this for the extra debuffs. Um, so if we talk about gear and gear sets, let's kind of go over what are we looking for in general. So there's a few different types of setups you're after. In the case of Sigrid, there's really... Three or, three or four different versions of it. So you have the version like how I have where I'm using attack set and crit chance. You have another version which is speed and crit chance. So this would be you're gonna have you're gonna you're gonna be a lot faster, but you're gonna have to struggle to get some of your attack stats in the beginning. You have a destruction set which looks very similar to this. Actually, this is a destruction set. This is you can obtain this from the Nick Seed uh, five. Uh, labyrinth so i recommend anybody new start pushing your labyrinths push through it there are guides out there that show you the map of how to navigate the nick seed chamber beat nick seed 5 get this set it can roll really really well and this could be a very good wyvern set for you this actually my set if i hadn't have perfected my cigarette set so bad this or so much this would have been on cigarette so work on your set this could be a very good starter set for you a very hard hitting set you will this mine rolled really slow so you would need general purgus to push her forward if you rolled it this slow um if you rolled it 150 160 you're probably a little bit faster 170 it's definitely good 180 you're golden uh but i don't I don't know how well this would roll for most people. Um, you also have the rage set. Now, if I show you a rage piece, it looks like this. So let's see here. Let's go to recent, and uh, here's a rage piece. 
Uh, overall, this is actually pretty garbo rage piece. I would most likely I'm going to turn this into um, a uh, um, some uh, cores f to make my set, but. The rage set that I just want to show you and tell you about is it increases damage dealt by 30% when attacking a debuff target. This is mostly used for the one-shot teams, although it can be used for a non-one-shot team, but that's typically what you're lining up for if you are working on this set. You're typically setting this up for one-shot teams, which is something no beginner needs to even consider because of the amount of gear and units it requires to even to, to set up a true one-shot team. But they can be done, so as you get more efficient later on down the road, do note this, that if you're not really spending a lot of money in the game, then don't worry about it, because you can probably burn all of your energy resources in the hunt buffs, is the only time you really should be worried about one-shot teams. Um, you should be able to burn all your energy between the two days of hunts, so it doesn't matter if you kill it a little bit slower versus ripping through it all in day one. You're gonna if you get to the same end result of burning all your energy that you've saved up for it, mission accomplished. Um, but yeah, that, so that set exists, and you'd also use a crit chance as well with it. So there are a few different sets out there that um, are else to be noted. Just in general, is the immunity set which you get from Azmanac. Um, you have the uh, counter set which is from Banshee. You have um, we can go over those really quickly. Basically, you have uh, Wyvern is holding down um, crit chance, hit set, which is your effectiveness, and speed. That's why you're here is for speed and crit, uh, the critical set. Golem is for attack, HP, and defense. You have Banshee for um, resist sets. That's more like Soul Weaver kind of stuff. It's very rare you'll actually use these sets. Destruction sets which is the crit damage set. Lifesteal, which could be used on very high damaging PvP units is most likely where you'll want to use this. And counter sets is also a PvP set. Uh, can have some PvE uses, but most of the time it's PvP. Asmanac is for your immunity and rage set. Uh, unity set is pretty much Garbo. Uh, there's a few people who could probably use it, but for the most part, you're never gonna do it. You're mostly here for immunity because it's mostly PvP or you're here for your rage set. Uh, KD's is unfortunately not even really, they're, they're about to buff these at this point in time. We know that they're working on changing this. So KD's at the point you're watching may be actually very good sets, but right now you don't really farm this. This, you come in for the achievements and you, you walk away. Um, so back to talking about gear and gearing. I want to kind of go over a few things with you and before we wrap up and that's, you know, what are you looking for when you're enhancing? What are we, um, where, what are we kind of looking for? How do we roll? How do we not roll? So I'm going to take this helmet here. It's an immunity helmet. It's not bad. It's max rolled crit chance. It's actually, I believe this is max rolled attack, flat attack. I should probably roll this to speed if I end up keeping this, or this could go on a very offensive uh, character. The speed, the attack though is half rolled. Um, so I think this is actually min rolled attack, um, which the max attack is eight, but the crit damage is one off for max and the crit chance is maxed. So this is a good piece to roll on. And I kind of would let you know that if you happen to have low level fodder, you can start. Um, so something to note is red pieces. They have all four of their stats showing. If we come over here to purple, they only have three stats showing. And these three stats, um, you will get your fourth stat at plus 12. Um, and then obviously blue, you'll get one at plus nine and plus 12. And anything after that, you should not be leveling at all. It's very rare you should actually ever level blue gear, but for the very random chance, ask the question, does this need to be leveled? And I'll give you the clue of if it does, if it has plus four speed on the front main stat, or it's the absolute max rolled two main stats you need, and it happens to tap max rolls, you might want to do it. But for the most part, the general rule of thumb is just don't touch blues. Just break down your blues for cores so that you can make gear out of them. So here, since I don't have any low level fodder, I'm going to use a few charms and we're going to probably plus three or plus six this helm just to kind of give you the idea of what we're after here. So here, the big thing that I'm going to be looking for is I want to see a big crit damage roll and I want to see a big crit chance roll. I don't want it to hit attack. If it hits attack once, that's okay. 
I don't want it, but if I happen to gem this over to speed, that's fine, because then that'll that'll give me a little bit more speed than normal. Attack, it needs to max roll attack. If it min rolls attack, this is done. It's 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 bad, but I might still hit it because of the crit chance and crit damage is so high. So we're gonna feed it in slowly because there's chance of getting good and great successes. So here we're gonna go ahead and roll it once. We're gonna see if it, we get a good success. Yep, we got a good success, and it happens to roll flat attack. Okay. As long as it doesn't go into flat attack, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, as I said. Because if I happen to gem this to speed, it's not that bad. So, again, we're going to do this one at a time, just for the chances of getting the success rate up. So, do we get a good success? Nope, we get a normal enhance. We're going to get a normal enhance. Yep, alright. So, we should get a normal or enhance, and it's going to now add into another stat. Again, we're going to hope for crit damage, crit chance, and percentage attack. Goes into flat. I probably would stop on this helm for now until I really, really need that type of helm. It could end up being a decent carrot helm. Who knows? But let's go in and see what happens. All right. We got uh, four crit damage. That's really good. So at this point, I'd probably go ahead and take it up to plus nine, see how it goes, plus 12. If plus 12 goes into any one of the bottom three stats, I'm full sending it to 15 at that point. That's kind of how I'm looking at the gear. Okay, so if we talk about um, other gear for other characters and to kind of just show you something else, I will bring up um, somebody that I'm working on slowly over time, and that's building up my Alencia. My Alencia isn't great, but she has a different thought process to her. Unlike Sigurd, where we're trying to get maximum crit, you know, or maximum attack stat, here we're trying to get the most HP built into it. So I'm looking for percent HP stuff on my gear or crit chance defense. You know, I'm trying to get her built up a little bit different. So in this case, I would have loved to have had a percentage HP roll here. That's why it's rolled for now because the crit damage was so high and the effect resistance isn't horrible, but this chest could be so much better for her. So, but this was just because I needed to clear out some inventory space. I went ahead and took it from plus 12 to plus 15. Um, her necklace isn't horrible. Um, this actually is a pretty decent necklace for Alencia because it's 60% HP to her. We rolled uh, one of the useless stats over to de just flat defense, get her defense up a little bit. Overall, this is actually not a bad, um, not a bad necklace for her. Um, the ring, again, is a percentage HP because that's how she's based. Uh, speedy ring. I was actually really impressed at how well it rolled. Uh, could have rolled better, but it's still an overall decent ring. And then because I needed speed on more speed on her, this is also a case of you seeing the speed imprint. It's plus 40 at 85 and it's plus 45 at 90, which is reforged, which is how you get it reforged. This one actually turned out really good for her. Um, I could have used another roll. You know, I think actually it rolled all into crit damage. Unless effectiveness was 3 or unless health was low, maybe like a 5% roll, I don't think it rolled into anything. I think it just went straight into crit damage the whole way up. So, for Alencia, it's a little bit different than you can see with Sigrid. So you gotta be careful when you're looking at the units you have. But I'll give you a very quick overview as we go to wrap up of what are you after here. So depending on your build and depending on who you are, with Sigrid, your attack sets more than fine to get started with you'll probably want to slap a crit set on her as you get it farmed up whether it be from drops from something but get a crit rate set on her put it on your left side bad pieces because your accessories are probably going to roll hopefully roll better you'll have to use your discretion at how to do that uh for your next main uh wyvern unit we're going to assume you're going with the basic connection units which would be alexa alexa you're going to want um you're going to want high crit damage, you're going to want uh, crit chance, attack, um, some effectiveness on her as well because you want her to be able to land her poison. Is it on her S2? Yes. She has a poison on her S2, so some effectiveness, effectiveness on her isn't the most horrible idea in the world to do. Um, so you could get away with a speed set, which is perfectly fine. Um, a speed crit chance, speed effectiveness set, something just to make sure she's getting good you want good attack good crit chance good crit damage she hits really hard for a three star unit she's a very good early wyvern unit uh you may need to six star her later on i was going to if i kept using her just to have her do more damage because it's again trying to get it done faster for furious the only thing you need to know here is he needs to be the fastest unit by 10 speed 
So whatever whatever speed your your fastest second fastest unit is on your team, he needs to be 10 faster than that unit. You want him cycling first every time. Why? Because of the way his skills work. You want to make sure that he's fast enough so that his uh, he goes from his skill two into his skill three every time he comes around when they come off cooldown. And that he always goes first, that he cycles first on your team. So at that point, you want a speed set and anything with speed imprints on it to get him as fast as possible. So definitely try to pick up speed imprint boots and then any accessory that rolls speed and rolls a couple things of speed, everything is gonna need some speed on it to get him out in front. So this is where the speed tuning will come in. If you decide to go the Montmorency route, which some may do because she's the cheaper build over Angelica, all you need to do is either get your rod, uh, Idol's Cheer, which is the Tamarind artifact. Um, I think people talk about Potion Vial's a good one. Just you're gonna want something, artif some good Soul Weaver artifact. And then really, I kid you not, just get the HP set that comes, that you're gonna get I think day five or day four in the new player rewards. Just slap that on her, plus 15 it, and hope to, you don't roll crit chance. I am looking at you, Rowana's version. One of these really, yeah, there we go. There's the turd in the punch bowl. You got, uh, I, um, yeah, kind of sucks. Uh, so I'd actually roll that to like defense percent or something, or no, actually at that point I have to roll it flat health or defense if I really got anal with. Honestly though, with these free HP sets, just take them to plus 15 and some soul weaver can make use of it and do in game content with it. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, other than that, uh, the other thing to just point out is so that you understand, especially if you start doing early game PVP, is you may see a lot of immunity buffs and I need to show you, I believe it's Lilius has an immunity set. So the last thing I'll talk about as far as sets go is how is you may see this appear in PVP and this is how they're getting it. There's a turn one, your very first turn grants you immunity by wearing the immunity set. Now, this isn't something you need to worry about right away, but if you see it and you're wondering why are they all, why do I see a bunch of units with immunity debuffs or immunity buffs as soon as I start, nobody cast anything, their passives don't show it, this is where it's coming from, just so that you know ahead of time where to go. Um, the last thing we'll talk about is a few artifacts, um, because this is part of gearing. If you start out, hopefully you're getting Daydream Jokers from your early pulls, if not, you're gonna have to be cautious with what you're using. Um, they're cheap to change out, so don't feel like it's the worst thing in the world. But the first thing you really wanna do with Sigrid, as soon as you get a Daydream Joker, slap it on her. Slap the another Daydream Joker as soon as you get it on, um, as soon as you get it, put it on your next damage dealer, whether it be Alexa or um, Clarissa or some other blue unit that's doing damage for you. Uh, as far as Furious goes, um, if you're using Furious in the beginning for um, defense breaking, hope you get Song of Stars, the five star artifact. Maybe you started with it, maybe you didn't. Maybe you pulled it in a daily, maybe it's just randomly sitting there, you don't even know where you got it from. But if you happen to have Song of Stars, put it on him, it's a good one. If not, I actually don't know what you're gonna use. I used Miss Confile, I think I used, uh, uh, which is a uh, limited artifact. Uh, I don't remember what I was actually using right away when I first started using Furious. I actually don't remember, was it Candlestick? Might have been Candlestick? I don't know. I don't remember what I had on my Furious early, early game. Um, and then if you're doing, uh, if you happen to have, um, same thing applies for Alencia. If you, you basically do the same thing you do on Alencia, uh, or not Alencia, but Angelica, you do the same thing you do to Montmorency. The identical same thing. Uh, you'd invest into her and she is right here in my no level area. Let's see right Here yeah, she'll get the same thing. She gets the same treatment The only difference between her and Montmorency is her skills cost molas. So do be careful and Montmorency's cost stigma a lot easier to farm Cigarette really needs to be molded. Um, I should also point out with Furious, especially you newer players, you're probably not going to realize this, but in order to properly use Furious in your Wyvern team, you do need to have him molded like this. 
So his uh, skill two does need the skill uh, Terran cooldown, and you do need his uh, skill three to be molded to plus six to have a 100% chance, minus the 15% innate resist, to uh, defense break. So definitely you're going to have to go do this to Furious if you decide to use him. If you're doing, um, if you happen to get Clarissa, then um, basically do the minimum of like skill uh, cooldowns. That's the big thing you're after here. So I did the tur I did the cooldown here, and then I just increased damage for the effectiveness of being able to land an extra defense break. I had the stuff laying around. This wasn't a big sweat out of my pocket when the time came. Uh, obviously, being that cigarette is your big investment, you definitely want to plus 15 her over time because she will she is going to be such a long term investment. This is a worth plus 15ing. Um, so definitely get onto that. If if not, go down to whatever says skill cooldown. If it has it, in this case, only S3 has it, so that's all you really need to worry about. Um, Montmorency will need her specialty change. You cannot use her base. You will need the specialty change, so you will need Angelic Montmorency in order to properly use her. And I will go ahead and point out, you will probably want to farm her runes as well, because this is really where she starts shining, is what's behind the scenes in these runes, not just her skills overall. So that's the basics of gearing. There's a lot more to it, and I don't really want to go too much more in depth just because it's it's so specialized that it really comes down to what are you trying to do with the unit? What specific what specifics are you trying to accomplish? Like you could build Ravi a couple different ways. You can build um, Adventure Raz a couple different ways. Uh, Ilyanov is built wrong by what most people are saying right now. <clears throat> I just put gear on her so I could level her up. Lilius is built about where you want her. Uh, obviously, I could still build her better. Um, Alencia could still be built better. Um, but this is the general thing where I wanted to go with her. Um, actually, Rowana is actually pretty darn good for where she needs to be. LQC needs some work. Um, but I'm working into her, into her direction. Heck, I'll even show you how I'm starting from the beginning with my Fighter Maya build. So this is how I'm working towards it. I found some pieces that work really well. And I am slowly leveling it up with fodder as I go along. And just to show you how to set up somebody, we're going to go to... Um, let's go to Flan, and basically I'll show you how, how we would be setting up a new character, and then we'll call it quits. So for Flan, you want two things. You want her to be fast, and you want her to have effectiveness. So our big thing here is we're going to be looking for speed substat, and we're going to be looking for effectiveness. So right out the gate, I know that this sword is a raid sword, so we hope that this thing, basically for her, rolls speed, as much speed as we can get it, and effectiveness. So we're going to do that. Uh, I don't have anything that has both, so we'll take it off for that. We want just the speed. Um, speed, health, crit damage, defense, uh, speed, attack. Honestly, any of these could work. Um... We'd be looking for like speed, HP, defense. So we would take maybe this. Now we need full speed all the way from everything else. Uh, so we need speed on the chest. Uh, that's poorly rolled. So we'd look for something new. Uh, maybe percent health. That's fine. We would take that just for now. Um, here you'd be looking for percent health. There's no stats on there that we actually want other than speed so but we'll take that for now because that's basically you know if we're trying to set it up and force it out uh here i would want um at this point we would want a effectiveness ring so perfect uh it's got defense and speed so we're hoping defense and speed at that point and um let's take that off and we want a uh speed boot so we need speed speed defense percent effect resist uh, do we have anything with effectiveness in speed HP we have it in crit chance um, so we would probably take that and then maybe go for a speed helm because we want the speed set on her 
So at that point, we're going to say we don't want. Um, we'll take speed, just speed helmets. Defense, effect resist. That rolled into flat attack. Probably not fast enough, but it'd be enough to get started because when we plus this boot, we know we're gonna have 40 speed, so that's gonna get her up to around 200. And she's on her way. We hope we hit a lot of speed builds along the way. And that's kind of how you would look about building a character and you'd wanna navigate through your menus. It's really that simple. This menu makes this a lot easier to figure out. And it even is great if you're wanting to see uh, compare builds like a lot of people thought when I got the Nick seed build uh, They thought that I was gonna be able that that was gonna be the better set over cigarettes build But then when I actually showed them this they're like no Freaking way is that actually your set was actually that much better So there you can see that sure I lose 700 attack, which was the big deal here I gained HP. I lost speed not a big deal. I gained crit chance. I over capped uh, crit damage and my effectiveness went to trash. And they thought that that was going to be better than this set. So in the end, not everything's always going to be a direct upgrade. And you may end up working out better. So some of you may prefer this set. And that's great. Some of you may prefer this set. And that's great. It's all optional. You have the ability to do whatever. So that's pretty much gearing in a nutshell. If you have any questions, make sure to hit me up down below. I'll try to help you out. Let's move on to the next one.